products, and their elimination. This video is based on, the NCERT and, NEET syllabus prescribed by NDA. This is a complete course for the entire chapter, excretory products, and their elimination. Students are requested to follow, the video carefully and, solve as many questions as possible. Excretion is the collection, separation, and elimination of nitrogenous waste materials, from the body of an organism. Nitrogenous waste materials are, formed as a result of metabolism. Animals are classified into, ammonotelic, ureotelic, and, uricotelic, based on the excretory product. Let us see what is, ammonotelism. Animals excrete metabolic waste, as ammonia is called, ammonotelic animals. The process of excretion of ammonia is called, ammonotelism. It is commonly found in aquatic organisms. It needs 350 to 500 milliliters of water, to excrete 1 gram ammonia. Ammonia is highly poisonous and highly soluble in water. Hence, it should be removed, as soon as it is formed. Aquatic animals do this, by diffusion, as ammonia is highly soluble in water, and water is available in abundance. It shows by, aquatic invertebrates, tadpoles, bony fishes, etc. Let us see what is, ureotelism. Animals excrete metabolic waste, as urea is called ureotelic animals. The process of excretion of urea, is called ureotelism. Terrestrial animals need to, conservation of water. Hence, these animals convert ammonia, into less poisonous urea in the liver. Some amount of urea is retained, in the body fluid, to maintain the desired osmolarity. Mammals, many terrestrial amphibians, and marine fishes mainly excrete urea. It requires, 50 milliliters water to excrete 1 gram, urea. Chondritized fishes retain urea, in the body fluid, to maintain osmotic balance. Now, we can examine uricotelism. Animals excrete metabolic waste, in the form of uric acid is called, uricotelic animals. The process of excretion of, uric acid is called, uricotelism. Ammonia is converted into, uric acid in the liver, by urea cycle. Uric acid is insoluble in water, and is at its least poisonous. It needs only 10 water to excrete 1 gram uric acid. Hence, it helps to conserve water in some animals like, birds, insects, land snails, reptiles, etc. Survey of the animal kingdom for various excretory organs. Protonephridia, or flame cells are the excretory structures, in platyhelminthes or, flatworms, example planaria, rotifers, some annelids, and the cephalocordate, amphioxus. Protonephridia are primarily concerned with, ionic and fluid volume regulation, that is, osmoregulation. Nephridia are the tubular excretory structures of, earthworms, and other annelids. Nephridia help to remove nitrogenous wastes, and maintain a fluid and ionic balance. Malpighia tubules are, the excretory structures of most of the insects, including cockroaches. Malpighia tubules, help in the removal of nitrogenous wastes, and osmoregulation. Antennal glands, or green glands, perform the excretory function in crustaceans, like prawns. Now, we can study the human excretory system. The human excretory system, consists of the following parts. A pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, an urinary bladder, and an uetra. Observe the diagram, given below for reference. We can study the details of, each and every part, in the following parts of the video. Let us study, the structure and functions of kidneys. Location. Kidneys are located, in the abdominal cavity, one on either side of the vertebral column. It extended between the last thoracic vertebra and third lumbar vertebra. Color. It is a reddish brown or crimson colored organ. Dimension. It is about. 10 to 12 centimeters in length, 5 to 7 centimeters in width, 2 to 3 centimeters in thickness, with an average weight of 120 to 170 grams. Peritoneum. Kidney covered with peritoneum, on the ventral surface, and dorsally it is free, hence called retroperitoneal kidney. 
see the diagram, and observe different parts of the human excretory system. It includes kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. The kidney has an outer fibrous sheet, called a capsule. The inner part of the kidney shows outer cortex, inner medulla. The medulla has many renal pyramids. The blood supply includes the renal artery and renal vein. The adrenal gland is present as a cap on the kidney. The structure of the kidney shows the following parts. Hilum. Towards the center of the inner concave surface of the kidney is a notch called hilum, through which air either blood vessels and nerve center. Pelvis. Inner to the hilum is a broad funnel-shaped space called the renal pelvis with projections called calices. Capsular. Renal fascia. The outer layer of kidney is a tough capsule, cortex and medulla. Inside the kidney, there are two zones, an outer cortex and an inner medulla. Renal pyramid. The medulla is divided into a few conical masses, called medullary pyramids, projecting into the calices, singular, calyx, column of Bertani. The cortex extends in between the medullary pyramids, as renal columns called columns of Bertani. Structure of Nephro Each kidney has, nearly 1 million complex tubular structures, called nephrons, which are the functional units of the kidney. Each nephron has two parts, the glomerulus, and the renal tubule. Glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries, formed by the afferent arterio. It is a, fine branch of renal artery. Blood from the glomerulus is carried away, by an afferent arteriole. The renal tubule begins with, a double-walled cup-like structure, called Bowman's capsule which encloses the glomerulus. Glomerulus along with Bowman's capsule, is called the malpian body, or renal corpuscle. See the diagram and, observe the different parts of the nephron. Renal tubule. The renal tubule consists of, the following parts. PCT. The tubule continues further, to form a highly coiled network, called proximal convoluted tubule, PCT. Henel's loop. A hairpin-shaped Henel's loop is the, Next part of the tubule, which has a descending, and an ascending limb. DCT. The ascending limb continues, as another highly coiled tubular region, called distal convoluted tubule, DCT. Collecting duct. The DCTs of many nephrons open into a straight tube, called the collecting duct, many of which converge, and open into the renal pelvis, through medullary pyramids in the calices. Cortical and medullary nephrons. The malpian corpuscle. PCT and DCT of the nephron, are situated in the cortical region of the kidney, whereas the loop of Henel, dips into the medulla. Cortical nephrons. In majority of nephrons, the loop of Henel is too short, and extends only very little, into the medulla. Such nephrons are called, cortical nephrons. Juxtamedullary nephrons. In some of the nephrons, the loop of Henel is, very long, and runs deep into the medulla. These nephrons are called, juxtamedullary nephrons. Peritubular capillaries. The efferent arteriole emerging from the glomerulus, forms a fine capillary network, around the renal tubule, called the peritubular capillaries. Vasa recta. A minute vessel of this network, runs parallel to the Henel's loop, forming a, U-shaped vasa recta. Vasa recta is absent, or highly reduced in cortical nephrons. Urine formation. Let us see, how the urine forms in the kidney. There are three stages involved in urine formation. Ultrafiltration. Selective reabsorption. Renal secretion. First, we will study ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration is carried out by the glomerulus, and is called glomerular filtration. On average, 1100 to 1200 ml of blood is filtered, by the kidneys per minute, which constitute roughly one-fifth of the cardiac output. The glomerular capillary blood pressure, causes filtration of blood through three layers, namely, the endothelium of glomerular blood vessels, the epithelium of Bowman's capsule, and a basement membrane between these two layers. The epithelial cells of Bowman's capsule called podocytes, which produce filtration slits, or slit pores. Blood is filtered so finely, through these membranes, that almost, all the constituents of the plasma, except the proteins, pass onto the lumen of the Bowman's capsule. Therefore, it is considered a process of ultrafiltration. 
glomerular filtration rate and its regulation. The amount of filtrate formed by the kidneys per minute is called glomerular filtration rate GFR. GFR in a healthy individual is approximately 125 milliliters slash minute, that is 180 liters per day. The kidneys have built-in mechanisms for the regulation of glomerular filtration rate. One such efficient mechanism is carried out by juxtaglomerular apparatus JGA. JGA is a special sensitive region formed by cellular modifications in the distal convoluted tubule and the afferent arteriole at the location of their contact. A fall in GFR can activate the JG cells to release renin, which can stimulate the glomerular blood flow and thereby the GFR back to normal. Reabsorption A comparison of the volume of the filtrate formed per day. 180 liters per day, with that of the urine released, 1.5 liters, suggests that nearly 99% of the filtrate has to be reabsorbed by the renal tubules. This process is called reabsorption. The tubular epithelial cells, in different segments of the nephron, perform this either by active or passive mechanisms. For example, substances like glucose, amino acids, sodium, etc., in the filtrate are reabsorbed actively, whereas the nitrogenous wastes are absorbed by passive transport. Reabsorption of water also occurs passively in the initial segments of the nephron. Tubular secretion During your information, the tubular cells secrete substances like hydrogen ions, potassium ions, and ammonia into the filtrate. Tubular secretion is also an important step in urine formation, as it helps in the maintenance of the ionic and acid-base balance of body fluids. The function of the tubules. Proximal convoluted tubule, PCT. PCT is lined by simple cuboidal brush border epithelium, which increases the surface area for reabsorption. Nearly all of the essential nutrients and 70 to 80 percent of electrolytes and water are reabsorbed by this segment. PCT also helps to maintain the pH and ionic balance of the body fluids by selective secretion of hydrogen ions, ammonia, and potassium ions into the filtrate and by absorption of carbonic ions from it. Henel's loop. Reabsorption is minimum in its ascending limb. However, this region plays a significant role in the maintenance of high osmolarity of medullary interstitial fluid. The descending limb of the loop of Henel is permeable to water but almost impermeable to electrolytes. This concentrates the filtrate as it moves down. The ascending limb is impermeable to water but allows transport of electrolytes actively or passively. Therefore, as the concentrated filtrate pass upward, it gets diluted due to the passage of electrolytes to the medullary fluid. Distal convoluted tubule, DCT. Conditional reabsorption of sodium ions and water takes place in this segment. DCT is also capable of reabsorption of carbonic ions and selective secretion of hydrogen and potassium ions and ammonia to maintain the pH and sodium potassium balance in the blood. Collecting duct. This long duct extends from the cortex of the kidney to the inner parts of the medulla. Large amounts of water could be reabsorbed from this region to produce concentrated urine. This segment allows the passage of small amounts of urea into the medullary interstitium to keep up the osmolarity. It also plays a role in the maintenance of pH and ionic balance of blood by the selective secretion of hydrogen ions and potassium ions. See the diagram and find out the different ions absorb and secrete at different parts of the renal tubule. Mechanism of concentration of the filtrate. Mammals have the ability to produce concentrated urine. The Henel's loop and vasa recta play a significant role in this. The flow of filtrate in the two limbs of Henel's loop is in opposite directions and thus forms a counter current. The flow of blood through the two limbs of vasa recta is also in a counter current pattern. See the diagram and observe the difference in the direction of movement of the filtrate and blood in the vasa recta. Mechanism of concentration of the filtrate. 
with the proximity between the Hennel's loop and Vesa Recta, as well as the counter current, in them help in maintaining an increasing osmolarity towards the inner medullary interstitium, Ta is, from 300 milliosmol per liter in the cortex to about 1200 milliosmol per liter in the inner medulla. This gradient is mainly caused by sodium chloride and urea. NaCl is transported by the ascending limb of Henel's loop, which is exchanged with the descending limb of Vesa recta. NaCl is returned to the interstitium by the ascending portion of Vesa recta. Similarly, small amounts of urea enter the thin segment of the ascending limb of Henel's loop, which is transported back to the interstitium by the collecting tubule. The above described transport of substances, facilitated by the special arrangement of Henel's loop, and Vesarekta is called the counter-current mechanism. This mechanism helps to maintain a concentration gradient in the medullary interstitium. Presence of such interstitial gradient helps in an easy passage of water from the collecting tubule, thereby concentrating the filtrate urine. Human kidneys can produce urine nearly four times concentrated than the initial filtrate formed. Regulation of kidney functions. ADH mechanism. Osmoreceptors in the body are activated by changes in blood volume, body fluid volume, and ionic concentration. An excessive loss of fluid from the body can activate these receptors, which stimulate the hypothalamus to release antidiuretic hormone, ADH, or vasopressin from the neurohypophysis. ADH facilitates water reabsorption from the latter parts of the tubule thereby preventing diuresis. An increase in body fluid volume can switch off the osmoreceptors and suppress the ADH release to complete the feedback. ADH can also affect kidney function by its constrictor effects on blood vessels. This causes an increase in blood pressure. An increase in blood pressure can increase the glomerular blood flow and thereby the GFR. Renin angiotensin mechanism the juxtaglomerular apparatus plays a complex regulatory role in kidney function. A fall in glomerular blood flow or glomerular blood pressure or GFR can activate the JG cells to release renin, which converts angiotensinogen in blood to angiotensin 1 and further to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2, being a powerful vasoconstrictor, increases the glomerular blood pressure and thereby GFR. Angiotensin 2 also activates the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. Aldosterone causes reabsorption of sodium ions and water from the distal parts of the tubule. This also leads to an increase in blood pressure and GFR. This complex mechanism is generally known as the renin angiotensin mechanism. Atrial natriuretic factor ANF, mechanism. An increase in blood flow to the atria of the heart can cause the release of atrial natriuretic factor ANF. ANF can cause vasodilation, dilation of blood vessels, and thereby decrease blood pressure. ANF mechanism, therefore, acts as a check on the renin angiotensin mechanism. Micturition. The signal for micturition is given by CNS. This signal is initiated by the stretching of the urinary bladder as it gets filled with urine. In response, the stretch receptors on the walls of the bladder send signals to the CNS. The CNS passes on motor messages to initiate the contraction of smooth muscles of the bladder and simultaneous relaxation of the urethral sphincter, causing the release of urine. The process of release of urine is called micturition, and the neural mechanisms causing it is called the micturition reflex. Adult excrete 1 to 1.5 liters urine per day. Urine slightly yellow, pH 6 with characteristic odors. 25 to 30 grams of urea is excreted out per day by kidneys. Analysis of urine helps in the clinical diagnosis of many metabolic disorders, as well as malfunctioning of the kidney. For example, the presence of glucose, glycosuria, and 
ketone bodies, ketone urea, in urine are indicative of diabetes mellitus. Role of other organs in excretion. Let us examine other organs that help in excretion besides the excretory system, including the kidney. 1. Lungs. Lungs remove CO2, 200 milliliters per minute, water, volatile chemicals etc. 2. Liver, secretes bile containing substances like bilobin, biliverdin, cholesterol, degraded steroid hormones, vitamins, and drugs. 3. Skin, the sweat and sebaceous glands in the skin, can eliminate certain substances, through their secretions. Sweat is a watery fluid, containing NaCl, small amounts of urea, lactic acid, etc. Though the primary function of sweat is to facilitate a cooling effect, on the body surface. Sebaceous glands eliminate certain substances like, sterols, hydrocarbons, and waxes through sebum. This secretion provides a protective oily, covering for the skin. Disorders of the excretory system 1. Uremia Normally blood contains 0.003 grams urea per 100 milliliters. If it exceeds more than 0.05, then it is called uremia which is highly harmful, and may lead to kidney failure. In such patients, urea can be removed by, a process called hemodialysis. During the process of hemodialysis, the blood drained from a convenient artery is pumped into a dialyzing unit called artificial kidney. Blood drained from a convenient artery is pumped into a dialyzing unit after adding, an anticoagulant like heparin. The unit contains a coiled cellophane tube, surrounded by a fluid, dialyzing fluid, having the same composition, as that of plasma except, the nitrogenous wastes. The porous cellophane membrane of the tube, allows the passage of molecules, based on concentration gradient. As nitrogenous wastes are absent in the dialyzing fluid, these substances freely move out, thereby clearing the blood. The cleared blood is pumped back, to the body through a vein after adding antiheparin to it. This method is a boon for thousands of uremic patients all over the world. Disorders of the excretory system Renal failure and kidney transplantation Kidney transplantation is the ultimate method, in the correction of acute renal failures, kidney failure. A functioning kidney is used, in transplantation from a donor, preferably a close relative, to minimize its chances of rejection, by the immune system of the host. Modern clinical procedures, have increased the success rate of such a complicated technique. Renal calculi, stone or insoluble mass of crystallized salts, oxalates, etc., formed within the kidney. Glomerulonephritis, inflammation of glomeruli of kidney.